Hello everybody, today we're going to be making a vase of flowers. It's going to start as a drawn and turn into a painting with a little 3D effect to it as well. Um, we are doing this based on inspiration from the artist Vincent Van Gogh who created vases of sunflowers in many different ways. You however are going to be creating your vase and your background however you would like as well as creating whatever types of flowers you would like as well. I choose a variety variety of different flowers but you might choose to do just one kind so let's get started and talk about what supplies we're going to need so to get started for this you are going to need um, in total two large white pieces of paper but we're going to start with the one right now you're going to need a pencil you're going to need a black oil pastel or a black crayon if you press hard will work just as well and eventually we are going to need watercolors as well as scissors and glue sticks to put it all together at the end so for this first part what you see here is what you need pencil white paper oil pastel let's get started all right the first thing we're gonna do is I'm going to be drawing um, my vase I'm gonna do this on one side of the paper and I'm gonna be drawing a bunch of flowers and leaves pretty much everywhere else um, you don't have to worry about them going together right now because we're actually gonna be cutting and gluing them together at the end so they can all be separated so we're gonna work on a vase first and the first thing I'm going to do to create my vase is I'm going to create the top of the vase. I'm going to get to the top of my paper here and I'm going to do an oval shape. This is going to represent the opening of the vase. So you want it to be a nice sort of round oval shape. Just keep working on it until you get the shape that you're going for. It should be a very long, skinny, squished oval shape from here we're going to draw the shape of our vase you could have your vase be straight so you could use straight lines to get to the bottom of your paper so something like this you could do the classic curvy line where you go in and then out again do the same on one side as you did on the other side you can also feel free to add things like handles to the side of your vase as well if you think that would be something that would look really cool and unique for your vase or you could just do one big curve so it looks almost like a bowl shape of course you have the option of doing any other number of interesting shapes maybe you want a sort of more geometric one whatever design you decide to do whatever you do on one side you want to do the same on the other side and leave some space in between I decided to go with the classic curvy shape for my vase. So we have a squished oval at the top. We have whatever shape you decided for the side of your vase. And then the bottom is actually, instead of a straight line to connect it, we're gonna connect it with a little slight of a curve line. That's actually gonna make it look more realistic, like it's actually sitting on a table, um, rather than a straight line is gonna make it look very flat and unrealistic. Now we have to add some patterns to our vase. Your patterns can be really complicated, really simple, whatever you want them to be, but add something just to give your vase a little interest. Maybe you just wanna put a heart on the side, or maybe you wanna put a flower, or some stripes, polka dots, anything you can think of. I decided to make my vase look like this. All right, now that we have our vase drawn, now I'm gonna use the rest of this space to draw flowers and leaves and things like that. They can be whatever shape, whatever style you want. They could be some flowers, just like Vincent Van Gogh's, or they could be your own invented flowers. In no way do these flowers have to look like flowers from real life, but you certainly can pull up pictures of flowers and look at them when you do your drawings, if you wish. A good many flowers have a circle in the middle with petals around it. So I'm gonna zoom in and show you how I'm doing one of my flowers, and then I'll let you see how I'm doing all the rest. Once again, remember, I'm not trying to put any flowers up here, have them look like they're coming out of the vase. I'm just going to draw, start drawing some flowers um, all around, and I'll be cutting and gluing them later. So I'm gonna start with a center of my flower, and then I'm gonna draw some curvy petals. I think this is gonna remind me a little bit of a daisy. 
Um, a lot of times we have an easy time drawing petals from one direction, but once we are trying to draw them the other direction, they get a little squished and funny. So if you need to rotate your paper so that you're looking at it from a better perspective, so you can continue drawing your petals or your design a little bit easier, feel free to rotate and move your paper around. That's a real simple flower. I can make it a little more complicated by adding a few more petal designs in between. And there we have a real simple flower. Let's do another one. another flower this one with some pointier petal petals um, I also making sure that I'm not overlapping them um, I want to make sure there's a gap so that I will be able to cut them out later keep in mind you are going to be cutting in between so think about how hard the cutting job might be um, if you think that these are too detailed to cut around you might want to choose a simpler design around your flower something simpler might be something like this A little bit easier to cut around there's not as many tiny details so you have to decide what's going to be working best for you feel free to add fun patterns inside whatever it is you need to do and in addition to your flowers also think about adding a few leaves some giant leaf shapes like this or maybe some leaves more zigzaggy like this whatever shape leaf you want, but just make sure you add a few throughout as well so we can have those sticking out. Make sure they're nice and big. We are gonna be outlining these with our oil pastel. We don't want too many small designs. You want them to be pretty large so you can easily outline and so you can easily cut them out as well. After you have outlined everything in black the next step is to start drawing our background so we're going to set this paper aside and we're actually going to be getting our second piece of paper also a nice large piece and instead of doing a horizontal view like I was doing to make sure I could fit my vase and my flowers into the space I'm actually going to flip this so it's a vertical position because I'm going to be drawing a base for my vase to sit on and then some sort of background that I'm going to be putting in it as well okay the first thing I'm going to be doing to create my background is I'm going to create a pedestal for my vase to be standing on. So I'm going to start at the bottom of my paper and you can do this step in pencil first or you can do it in oil pastel first. It depends on how confident you feel to get your work started. So here we are at the bottom of the page and the first thing you're going to do is draw a vertical line down here at the bottom try to make it sort of in the middle of the page so I'm going to do a vertical line just like that that's going to be the corner of our table that we're doing next I'm going to try draw two diagonal lines going out so when you draw them you want them to be at an angle like this next we're going to draw two vertical lines from the end wherever we ended that line these are the sides of the pedestal. It's going to all make sense. Now from this end, I'm going to go up at an angle, diagonal angle up. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side, diagonal angle up. And this is creating the illusion that we are have a box that is at an angle. 
after you have this, we're going to decorate this with some sort of cloth or tablecloth of some kind. You could layer it with stripes, you can layer it with um, polka dots, what do you want to kind of make this a little bit more interesting than just a plain old box. After drawing this in pencil, I'm going over it with oil pastel just so it stands out a little bit better. If you want to add patterns to the top and the side so it looks like there's some sort of tablecloth on this table or this box, you can do that with your black oil pastel. Or if you happen to have extra colors, you could do something different. If I know that this tablecloth is going to be, let's say, blue, I might take a blue oil pastel and I might draw stripes on it or polka dots or little dashes, whatever, to give it some texture. I have stripes that are parallel, that means they're the same angle as the angles that are there. And then when it's on the side here, I'm gonna make these all vertical. Okay, so I have a little pattern there. You can fit that step if you want it to be a solid, plain one, or like I said, if you want to make it look like there's fabric on it, you can add some sort of pattern to it as well. Okay, now we're ready to do some watercoloring. So we have our background drawn. Not much that we had to do for this. Just make sure we had our little pedestal for the vase to sit on. Make sure you have lots of white space above it because you want to be able to fit that vase and all those flowers in there too. So we are going to be painting the background, painting the pedestal, and we're going to be painting our vase and all our flowers. Lots of painting. You can use whatever colors you want, however you want to do it, as long as you are filling it in with lots and lots of color. Okay guys, before you begin painting, no matter when you're painting, you're always going to be working with watercolors um, that are dry and this is how we kind of get our watercolors ready, prepped and ready to go. You're going to take your brush and you're going to dip and drip. So I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to dip it into the water and drip, drip, drip it into the color that I think I'm going to be using. If you're only using certain colors, then you can just do those certain colors. If you're going to be using lots of different colors, then you're going to want to drip it into a lot of different colors. Um, the purpose of doing this is it softens up your paint without you having to sit here and swish, swish, swish and stir it forever. It does it really quick for you. So I'm going to set this aside now and use it as needed. And now I'm ready to start adding paint to my project. So I'm gonna be painting my background and then also my pedestal. Then I will be setting that aside and painting inside the details of all the flowers, my vase, everywhere. The nice thing about the oil pastel is when you paint right on top of it, it resists the um, watercolor so that the black will still pop out. It also sort of creates a barrier between your paint in one section and another section, so it won't as easily slip out of one section into another section. Um, also, if you end up going outside the line, like I just did there for a second, not a big deal because we are gonna be cutting them out. All right, let's back to painting, painting, painting. is done. Now I'm going to take this and set it aside to dry. Um, I chose to do uh, cool colors and I chose to stick with two colors for the entire background. So the pedestal is blue stripes with purple and then the background is blue and purple. I tried to keep blue mostly around the pedestal itself so that the purple would still stand out and then it did splashes of purple in the background. I tried to blend them on the paper um, and I made sure I always clean my brush in between the colors. So as I did it, the colors were still staying nice. I'm okay if it's pooling and creating some weird texture. I kind of like that rough texture in the background. So I'm just gonna let that dry and then we're gonna work on our flowers and our vase.
Okay, and I finished painting all of my parts of my leaves, my flowers, my vase, everything. I tried to think really hard about picking flowers that I thought would pop out from the background really well. Now I did do one that's purple with a little blue on one side. I did the blue while the purple was wet so that it would bleed into it and create a little bit of shadow. I tried to do light version, dark version of some of my colors. I tried to layer some colors inside of colors, put mixed colors on the paper. Whenever you're mixing colors, try to mix them on the paper so you don't ruin the colors in your palette. Um, so in this one, I did some purple and red mixed together. Again, this I, if you watched, I did stripes of red and then I went in with just water and kind of let it bleed into the rest. And then um, I made my vase green with accents and did a little blue to create a little bit of a shadow. Um, feel free to paint yours however you want. Um, and I also filled this in with black, I forgot to mention, um, just to make it look like it was had a little deep inside part. Okay, for the final part of our project, we're gonna take our ride painted papers the background and the flowers in the vase and we're going to cut the pieces out of this paper so that we can assemble and glue them onto this paper so when you're cutting make sure you're cutting as neatly and carefully as you possibly can so that would be my first step is to cut them all out individually so you have a pile of little pieces and it's going to make the whole cutting process go a lot faster now that I have them working in these tiny little spaces, I have a lot less paper and hassle to deal with. So to it, cutting as many details as you possibly can, as neat as you possibly can. Let's go. All my pieces are totally cut out. I can take all of these and set them aside because the first thing we're gonna glue down is the vase itself. So we're gonna glue that right down. Now, um, I recommend for the vase gluing it down solid and completely so it's nice and flat. When we get to the flowers, you're gonna see maybe some different suggestions of ways to make it look a little 3D, like it's popping off. Um, so when you are gluing your vase down, make sure that you glue the outer edges. That is the most important part to glue. A lot of people like to glue only in the center. You actually don't need to do almost any glue in the center. The outside edge is where the most important glue is supposed to be because that is what holds our pair down. So some in the middle is totally fine. The edge is the most important. And I'm going to make sure that it rests nicely right on the center of this pedestal. And I'm going to make sure I flatten it with my hands. Make sure that it's nice and flat so that it dries evenly. And now I'm going to separate all of my flowers, leaving my leaves off to the side because those are the accents, the things that I'm going to add to later. So I'm going to bring this down a little bit so we can see what I have to work with. I'm going to decide my arrangement. Where do I want to put these flowers? In what direction do I want them to go? Do I want some of them to actually pop off the edge of the page or do I want them to all stay inside? Um, I could have some go out further this way and not so much tall and high up. Um, it's entirely up to you to decide how you think it best will look. Keeping in mind, we are going to be adding some leaves in here too. So once you decide the best arrangement for these lovely flowers, and where they should best be plate. You are then going to decide where these little leaves are gonna go. Are some gonna be going underneath or on top? Where do you think they're going to best look in the picture? You might end up using all of them. You might not end up using as many as you thought. If you think that your picture is well filled up with only a few, then that is fine. Once I 
I think I have some nice arrangements here, I'm going to start gluing them down. So I'm actually going to try to take the things that are supposed to be on the bottom and glue those down first. So I can either glue my leaves down underneath or another thing you could do is you could actually take the leaf, put a little bit of glue on the end of the leaf and stick it behind the flower wherever it is you wanted it peeking out. That way, instead of it being two pieces, it's one piece together, and I can easily glue it down together or move them, or move them around together as well. All right, now that I've attached some leaves to the actual flowers, just so to make it a little bit easier when I'm assembling, and I do have one leaf left over just in case I have another place to put it, I'm going to take my flowers and I'm actually going to flip them over and I'm using a piece of scrap paper so I don't get my pitcher or my table dirty. And I'm actually gonna put a glue over the entire back of it so that I can lay down nice and flat. You might want to, instead of making them totally flat, allow some of the parts to curl up. So instead of letting all of it be completely flat, you might decide to have some of these edges curl up. And the way to do that is to maybe take a pencil and take it, the petal, and curl it along the edge of it and allow it to curl up. So I do that with all my petals, maybe certain petals, let some of them flip up a little bit. It gives it a fun little three-dimensional look. You might want to do that with a lot of them so that there's a little bit of a 3D effect happening. Or you might want to do that with your leaves as well. In that case, you would actually only put glue on the middle, not on the edges, so that the edges will still perk up and flip up when they are placed onto your paper. So two different ways, glue them 100% completely all the way on the edges so it's a totally flat um, object, or you could curl some of the edges, just glue it in the center, and then put it on and you'll create these fun little 3D puffs. So I'm all done gluing my flowers down. As you can see, I had to have some of the parts of it be flat, some parts flip up a little bit. And you can see from the side how that looks, some of it being a little bit 3D and kind of popping out at you. Just gives it a really fun final look. If you don't like that 3D look, of course you can glue everything completely solid and flat and that's going to look really nice too. But um, this is our final piece with the vase sitting on a table with our beautiful flowers peeking out of the top of it. I hope you guys had fun making these Van Gogh inspired flower vases and I cannot wait to see the types of flowers, the types of vases, and the types of environment you decide to make for your beautiful artwork.